Hey you guys, welcome back to Lisa and Company. I'm Lisa and I'm so glad you could stop by today. Today, we're doing one of my favorite things to do and you know, cause I've done it before, I am using one Dollar Tree item three different ways. And let me tell you, it was so hard to stop at three. But enough of that, let's get started. DIY number one, I am going to take two whole Dollar Tree rugs and this little bag that I also had from Dollar Tree. Now I had initially had the idea to turn this bag into a pillow, so I thought why the heck not use it and incorporate it onto this one. So I am going to trim this one down and attach it before I put my pillow together. I folded it over to get kind of an approximate size and I'm just going to go ahead and trim this off. Now, I could have hemmed it or folded it under, but I thought, wouldn't it be fun to just fray the edges and give it just that sort of a little bit almost boho look. I love frayed burlap and fringe and I thought that would be a really fun way to finish this off. Now that I'm finished fraying all the edges, I am going to center this on here and then I'm going to use my fine tip glue gun to glue it down. Now, mom, I know I know how to sew and I know there's a sewing machine in the closet. I just wanted to get this one done quickly and if it works out as well as I think it does, I promise I'll sew next time, okay? Okay. You guys, if you know how to sew, by all means do it. If you don't or you don't enjoy it, just glue it together. The only thing is it means you're not going to be able to wash this pillow. However, if you are going to glue the pillow, please let me tell you, do not turn it inside out. Here's the thing. When you are gluing, you don't get a nice straight edge and if you turn this inside out and glue it as if you were sewing you get that wobbly edge and it just doesn't look good these rugs have a really great hemmed edge on them and if you glue them with the wrong sides together it leaves a really nice almost flanged edge trust me i've done it before i love the look of it and i beg you not to turn this inside out that may have been a little too dramatic but I feel like you guys got the idea. Now, don't forget as you're coming to the edge of gluing it together to leave yourself an opening so you can stuff it. What do I stuff it with? Well, here's the thing. If we were getting rid of toss cushions in my house, I always took them to the thrift store. Now, I save them, cut them open, and I use that stuffing. I have even been known to take old stuffed toys and use the stuffing from those. But really, why would I go buy new stuff if I have perfectly good stuff lying around the house? And sadly, this sort of hoarder always has something lying around the house. However, if you do need to get some, the best deal is to hit like your Walmart or something like that and buy a really inexpensive bed pillow because they're usually about four or five dollars and there's plenty of stuffing in there. When you're gluing this closed, don't be like Lisa, don't burn your fingers, and certainly don't burn your fingers several times over. Use your little Dollar Tree finger protectors. I was just too lazy to dig mine out. So I guess that would you will call that a lazy girl tip for this video. So today's video is part of a collaboration with two of my very favorite people here on YouTube. They don't get any nicer than this. Well, maybe, no. Yeah, meh. You know what? I have so many amazing friends on YouTube and we'll just leave it at that. But today I am collaborating with my good friends Kat at According to Kat and Casey at Coffee with My Sunshine. I have known these two since I started on YouTube and I am so excited that we finally found a time where we could do something together. So each one of us has taken one Dollar Tree item and used it several different ways ways. So make sure when you're done watching this video, and of course you've hit the like and subscribe and maybe even commented, that you make sure you go and watch their video so you can see what they used three different ways. This time I wanted to make a small lumbar pillow by folding the rug in thirds 
long ways and I had the idea to take my Dollar Tree nautical rope and spell something out like love or something like that and I kept looking on uh, Google to find a really great way to do it all in one piece because I didn't want my rope to fray and I just kept messing around and messing around and decided to start gluing. Then I looked at it and I was like, well, maybe I won't spell something out. Maybe I'll just add a whole bunch of cool embellishments. And I have this giant ball fringe. Like, does it get more fun than this? And I was like, okay, I'll do that. And I'll layer up some rope and we'll do all kinds of stuff. And then literally right here on camera, right in front of you guys, you're going to see like an aha moment where I go, oh my goodness, I know exactly what I want this to look like. So I realized in that moment that I had a whole bunch of extra trim left from another project and I could literally layer upon layer upon layer this fringe and it was going to be epic. Simple, a little bit boho, but totally epically fringe worthy. Now I did realize in order to do that, that I had to stitch rip those ends apart and I'm not gonna lie, it was a bit of a pain in the butt, but we got it. So now I am literally going to fold these and fit these so I have fringe going in both directions. We're gonna have a double row of fringe at the very end of the pillow to really layer it up because it's a little skimpy as far as fringe goes. And then I'm going to take my other piece flip it in the opposite direction and glue it down. And you guys, I so love this that I didn't think this pillow needed anything else. Of course, you guys are free to head down to the comments and tell me if you would have done that gigantic ball fringe, if you would have added some of the nautical rope or you thought it was just as cool as I did. Time to stuff this baby and you can see I am taking apart an old throw pillow that we've had stashed in the closet. I actually had to ask Izzy to dig this out because I had no idea where I had buried it and thank goodness the girl knew where it was. So stuff, stuff, stuff. The only thing I will tell you on this one is I wish I'd left the entire end open. It would have been a lot easier for me to get my hand in, but you know what? I had some good tunes on and we got it done. Glue that baby shut and bada bing, bada boom, this DIY, this boho beauty of a DIY is D-O-N-E. I love these pillows and I especially love that little motivational keep moving forward. We all have tough days and when I come home and see this in my living room, I think it's going to be just what I need. I hope you guys are enjoying my Dollar Tree rugs three different ways, but I gotta tell you, at the beginning, I said it was really hard for me to stop at three. Well, fear not, my friends. We are doing this again because I found the gray ones with the gray tassels. And you know what? This room behind me is about to get a makeover. I have some really cool ideas and I am gonna be doing it on an extreme budget with lots of Dollar Tree DIYs. So make sure you've hit that subscribe button so you can see what I do with the gray Dollar Tree rugs and what I do with this whole room behind me. I am using a whole bunch of Dollar Tree bits and pieces. I've got a square frame, a square sign left over from Thanksgiving, this little topiary ball, which is actually from Dollarama, and of course, a Dollar Tree rug. My letters did come from Walmart, but they have been used twice, if you can believe that. First thing I'm gonna do is trim off the fringe because that is not gonna be part of this project. and. Hmm, wonder where I got the extra fringe for the lumbar pillow. Right, I got it from this one. See, this is why you guys, you never throw away your scraps. I wouldn't have had that super cool pillow if I did. I'm gonna use a whole bunch of hot glue and let it set up really well to attach the frame to the sign. Just let it dry really well before you attach the fabric. And we're gonna do that by putting a whole bunch of glue right around the perimeter and pressing the fabric into it. 
Once that is dry, and I mean really dry because we don't want this to slip, we're gonna start gluing the frame and the fabric together. Did that make sense? Maybe it's easier to see. All I did was carefully fold it over bit by bit and attach the fabric to the fabric with the frame in between. Hopefully this is one of those things that's easier to see than explain. I actually love the way this worked out and I love that flat surface with the frame around it. It almost looks like it's been upholstered. Does that make sense, you guys? And I can totally see myself doing this for different seasons and check out how good that sign looks that way. So you could do like a reverse upholstery and oh my goodness, like, oh, so many ideas. Ugh, forgive me, you guys. I was totally having a DIY moment there. Now we wanna get this all wrapped up and I'm gonna attach the home letters to this and the topiary ball. Now it's really, really important when you're doing a sign like this that your H and the M and the M and the E line up perfectly. And for me, they need to be centered perfectly within that frame as well, or it's always gonna look a little wonky. I think that's the word I'm looking for. Once I had those letters placed and I was happy with the placement, I'm just gonna very carefully flip each one up and glue it down. It's funny because you can actually see the glue from previous projects still there. Do you guys recycle some of your DIY materials if, I don't know, project doesn't turn out quite like you thought or, I don't know, tell me, do you recycle your DIY materials? Alrighty, how about a couple of finishing options? I had some great greenery and I thought about putting it along the bottom. No bow for sure, cause this definitely wasn't a bow project. But you know what? I decided I liked the look of it just the way it was, that that green topiary ball finished it off just so. What I did need was something fun to hang it with and I have like a gazillion of these chains left over from a previous Dollar Tree project. Do you guys remember when I made those bird cages? Well, this is the leftovers and I'm not kidding you, I have a whole bunch. So I am just going to take this apart, pull a few pieces off, glue it down and call it a day. and we're done and you know what i really really like this now you guys know i'm a bit of a homebody and i love me a good home sign but this one the black the white the weathered letters and the green love for this diy i'm going to be using a seasonal dollar tree sign a styrofoam cone of course my dollar tree rug and some greenery now you can use whatever sign you have kicking around i had a whole bunch of these from easter and i just didn't get through them all i do love that on these signs you can take out the twine with those little plastic pieces on the end and it is so easy to reuse it at the end of your project now i'm just going to trim this off a little bit my sign was a little longer than what i needed and all i'm going to do is score this several times using my square to make sure i get a nice straight line and then i'm just going to break it off sand the edge just a tiny bit to make it even and we're done. A quick coat of my DIY chalk paint, which you guys is still going strong, like we must be into two months by now, seriously. Then while that's drying, I'm gonna wrap my cone. And I'm not gonna lie to you guys, this was I don't want to say the hardest part, but it was the trickiest part for me to figure out how to get the look I had in my head around this cone. So I'm going to cut a piece of the rug off and the goal was to get it so that 
there was extra fabric that covered my cone, but that I had fringe all the way around the top. Now that probably makes absolutely no sense, but I'm hoping it will once I have this all cut apart and glued together. Because you know how it is when you have an idea in your head and you're trying to execute it and it just won't work. Now, DIYers of the world, tell me if you do this as well. I literally lay in bed the night before this, trying to figure out the best way to cut this so my trim would be at the top. Now, yes, I could have cut the fringe off and reattached it, but I just had it in my head that there was going to be a way that I could wrap this styrofoam cone and keep that fringe all at the top. And there was, and I figured it out, but oh my goodness, who seriously loses sleep over DIYs? So once I had finished futzing around with it and getting it to look exactly like it did in my head, I put one bead of glue down the back so I could attach it to the board. And I kind of put it lower down. I didn't center it on the board simply because when I added the greenery, I wanted the greenery to be on the board as well as opposed to sticking out past the top. Before I added the greenery, I did make sure that that glue was dry because I didn't want it to slide or move around after I had it placed just where I wanted it. Honestly, deciding on which greenery I had was crazy. This is a piece from a previous project from Dollarama. I had a little bit left over of this one from Dollar Tree and I had this super cute shamrock one I bought earlier in the spring. That one I found was a little bit too short. The one from Dollar Tree, I just didn't have enough of, so I decided to combine them and use them together. So I used my side cutters to trim this one off and place these larger pieces in first. Then I took those last few little pieces from Dollar Tree and place those in, well, the gaps basically to fill it in. To finish this one off, I have these great little tags from Dollar Tree and I wanted to write bloom on it. Well, I tried this marker and it wouldn't work. And then I tried another one and it didn't work. And I finally found one. Yes, that worked. And you know what? Look at that bloom. I'm going to reattach my twine hanger and this one is done. I just love the way all of these black and white Dollar Tree rug projects came together. They add just a little something something to my black and white decor here at home. Well, that's it. That's a wrap for me today, you guys. I really hope you enjoyed my Dollar Tree rugs three different ways. And I hope it gave you some inspiration for what you could do with Dollar Tree rugs. Now, don't forget to head down to the comments and tell me which one you enjoyed the most and maybe which one you might try yourself. Don't forget to stop by every time we upload a video and you'll know by hitting that subscribe button as well as the notification bell. Thank you as always for stopping by Lisa and company and we'll see you in the next video. Don't forget to check out Casey and Kat's videos. The links are down below and here's a couple of other videos I thought you might enjoy. You guys, thank you so much for your support and I can't wait to see you next time.